Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this one-on-one -on -one conversation with candidate for school committee, Elizabeth Exton. Elizabeth, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, we want to get right into it. We know the time's going to go fast. So um, first thing I wanted to ask you about is that um, an issue that keeps coming up is uh, the achievement gap, perceived or real, uh, between um, students of color, minority students, and white students here in Arlington. Um, wanted to ask you just to elaborate a little bit more your, your thoughts on, on that issue. Sure. Um, so I definitely think that there are gaps in what is called the achievement gap um, between students of color um, and students of low socioeconomic status, high need students um, in Arlington as compared to the larger cohort of students. Um, you know, the achievement gap is a term that's used because of with the MCAS and how students score on that. Um, and I really think about it more as what's called an opportunity gap. Um, and so we need to think about how are students of color, students from underrepresented groups, uh, students with special needs um, performing across the board in our schools? Do they feel safe in our schools? Do they feel included in our schools? Do they feel that teachers have high expectations of them so that they can do well in school, whether it's on the MCAS or it's on tests that teachers are giving them, if it's just the day-to-day -day work that they're doing. Um, I think that we really need to look at the overall, um, the overall sense that students have in our schools. And one of the way that's measured is their achievement on the MCAS, their graduation rate. Um, but I'm more concerned with the overall picture um, of how students are feeling in our schools. And given that you are concerned about that, what is the role to, as you see it um, that you could play as a school board member in ensuring that that is happening? Sure, so I think one important piece is funding for professional development for teachers. Uh, we talk a lot about supporting teachers and having difficult conversations with their students, having difficult conversations with their colleagues about what these gaps look like. Um, that would be one thing. I think another aspect is increasing funding um, around intervention, reading teachers, math teachers, um, increasing funding for social emotional support, counselors, social workers. So I think there are a lot of areas that we can, uh, where we can make changes to support these students. You know, it's interesting to, to hear your, your response there and note um, how often you mentioned increasing funding um, and as, as part, of the, part of the key. Um, clearly, um, we are going to be, you know, opening schools at some point um, post uh, the pandemic or, you know, at a, at a, at a later stage. Um, and by all measures and accounts and prognostications, money's gonna be an issue um, for the town generally. Um, do you see that it's at all viable that within the next little while, you'll be able uh, as a school board to ask for or facilitate uh, getting more funding for those initiatives? Um, so absolutely, the budget is going to be very tight uh, next year. Uh, but some of the some of these things I've mentioned have already been um, allocated to those things. There was already an increase in math and reading teachers for next year. Um, so I think that even though we can't do all of the things that might that we might like to see in terms of closing that gap, there are things that are already happening um, that will continue forward. You know, one thing that came up um, in, in the debate was when you were talking about you know, the, the qualifications that make you a good candidate for the school board. You had mentioned being a teacher, kindergarten teacher, a, the parent of young children in the schools, uh, and also an advocate. So how do you see those things 
you know, specifically those different factors playing out um, in your work on the school board? Sure. So I think first, as an educator, I have a view of what is happening day to day in schools. Um, I'm in a classroom, so I see what students need. I hear what parents are asking from teachers. I work with administrators. So I have a really clear understanding of the day-to-day -day workings, the demands that are placed on teachers. Um, as a parent, I want the very best for my own children in their education. And so, uh, you know, I do have high expectations of my students, teachers, and want the very best uh, for them. And so therefore, because they're in the Arlington Public Schools, I want the very best for all of our students in town. Um, and as an advocate, I, um, as many people may know, in 2018, I advocated to get full-time kindergarten aides in all of the kindergarten classrooms across the district. Uh, and I, I did that because, one, because I felt like it was important, but I was able to succeed in doing that by bringing the research, bringing the personal experience, but also collaborating and connecting with the school committee, with the administration, with principals, with teachers, and really sharing, hearing and sharing everybody's perspective to be able to know what was going to be best for our youngest students. Yeah, how exactly did you work with or uh, persuade um, the school committee um, around that issue? Sure. So um, in the fall, it was in the fall of 2017 when this started and I just started by attending school committee meetings and budget subcommittee meetings and understanding more about how it all worked. Where does the money come from? How is it allocated? Where can it be moved around? Um, and then in December of 2017, I reached out on social media to other parents in town and just asked people to join me. Um, and this concern that I had. Um, and so we attended school committee meetings from December to March, every meeting. We spoke at every meeting. Um, I attended subcommittee meetings, but I also had personal conversations with individual school committee members, individual principals, and individual teachers to understand, was this even something that they wanted? Um, and when I heard from certain so from certain people that yes, this was something that they had been working on um, a little bit before that. And yes, it was something that was important for our learners. Um, you know, I was able to keep coming back and bringing the perspective of the community and our schools to make that change. Um, you have young children. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this is not yet an issue for them. But something that I think we all understand is that the level of stress that students feel uh, around their achievement and their experience in schools uh, is something that needs to be addressed. Um, what, you know, either what ideas do you have to bring to the table and what function do you see, again, the school committee as, as having uh, in alleviating uh, that situation? Um, so again, I think that increasing the social and emotional learning components of of our curriculum across from K to 12 is something that you know we need to continue to do. There are, are certainly those things are already happening, but continuing to keep that emphasis there. Um, I think opportunities for students to be able to talk about how they're feeling about their academics, how they're feeling about their social experiences in schools. Um, continuing to take the the temperature of students through um, you know the youth risk behavior survey um, and then using that that information to inform how we respond uh, in more severe cases I think you know at the high school there are certainly students who return um, from leaves that are a cause you know have left due to um, to severe anxiety or severe challenges around their academic, their feelings about their academic performance. And so I think we need to think too at the high school level about some um, intermediate uh, program for kids returning from a leave of absence um, back to the high school. Okay. Um, and how about what, what changes would you like to see happen um, to create a, 
an engaging, relevant, um, kind of 21st century uh, education for Arlington students, if to, the, to whatever extent you think that is not yet happening? Um, I think, I mean, I think at the younger grades that 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 I that I see that happening. Um, I think continuing, um, you know, in the middle and high school with um, electives and experiences where they can think about, you know, we always talk about like jobs that haven't even been invented yet. Like, what are what are electives? What are experiences that students can have to prepare them for things that we don't know, even know about yet? Um, Okay, um, you know, we have just uh, maybe two and a half, three minutes left. And um, I wanna make sure that if you wanted to address something that you haven't been able to adequately as far as you're concerned, uh, that I invite you to do so here because we do have a couple of minutes left. Okay, sure, thank you. Um, no, I just, I think it's important for the voters to um, hear a little a bit about my experiences at, in the classroom and the work that I've done um, they are particularly around issues of diversity and inclusion. Um, I co-facilitate a learning group with a number of other teachers um, around using children's literature to support students and teachers talking about challenging conversations around race, around identity, um, around different family structures. And so these issues that we've been talking about in town and that have come up recently um, are very important to me as an educator as well as a parent um, and so there's something that I do carry with me and think a lot about um, as a potential school committee member. Mm -hmm. And um, again I, 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 I know that, that I sound like a broken record in some ways but <laughs> what is the you know again what do you think the school committee can do and what do you think that you will be hopefully a propulsive force within uh, the school committee to do about addressing those things? Sure, I mean, I think it's a lot of just revisiting policies. How are we addressing policies that are affecting um, students from, of color, students from underrepresented groups, students with special needs um, in ways that don't match with how we want them to be succeeding? Um, again the budget continuing to think about even in these tight times where can we allocate funds to support all of our students um, and just continuing to ask questions of the administration and suggest to the administration things like professional development um, programs at the high school that might support students uh, just you know again just giving that that feedback yeah, when you say asking questions of the administration, obviously uh, it was touched upon in the debate and you, show, you clearly have a, an excellent understanding of what the relationship, formal relationship is between uh, the school committee and the, super, and the superintendent, for instance. Um, but when you say asking questions, are, 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 do, would that move over into, you know, exerting some kind of, uh, you know, pressure to, to inculcate these kinds of programs? You know, I mean, school committee members can strongly suggest um, a lot of things, but I, th I really believe in a collaborative relationship. And so I think by developing an understanding um, and a relationship of trust with the administration is going to be the most effective way to um, garner their support, move them along in their learning um, or in, in actions that I'd like to see happen. Okay, well, that will do it for us then. Uh, we want to thank you once again for joining us for these very quick 15 minutes. Now this is great. Um, and wish you and the other candidates well on June 6th. And um, for you audience out there, this is James Milan. We have been talking to Elizabeth Exton, who's a candidate for school committee for this year. Thank you for joining us. Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.